Good evening. Tonight we'd like to take you on a journey through the macabre. Complacence is our port of departure and terror our destiny. An unwilling participant in this particular journey is a young woman named Alexis Carey, who, like everyone else, is separated from tragedy only by a single moment, a bad choice, or an unfortunate coincidence. For Alexis is about to discover just how unforgiving fate can be to those who find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, especially when the place is a murder scene and the time is the midnight hour. Warren? Is that you? Hello? <sighs> well, hello there. I thought I heard the door open. How did you get in? Oh yeah, I gave you a key. Well, how about you take off those clothes? I got some new sheets here I think you'll really, really like. They're satin. Two Alabama Slammers. One for you, one for me. Happy birthday, Alexis. Thanks, Gabe. Bottoms up. Salud. <coughs> so you ready for another one? I think I have enough left to cover it. You had to pay? What the hell? I thought the entire point of coming here was because Warren owned the place and he was comping us drinks. And where's Liz? She's supposed to be here celebrating with us. I just asked the barmaid and she said they stepped outside a few minutes ago. I think they're having a fight. Bitch! Nobody walks out on me. Nobody! Fucking bastard, don't ever touch me again! Where do you think you're going, Liz? Go your damn business. Everything you do is my business. Let me go! You don't owe me, Warren. Not anymore. That's what you think? That's what I know. Everything you've got, I gave you. The job, your money, your clothes. Wrong! I earned them. I don't need you or these filthy jobs anymore. What the hell's the matter with you? Are you all right, Liz? Fine. Didn't feel a thing. Never do with Warren. Oh. All right, enough. One more time and I'm calling the cops. Yeah, call the cops, Gabe. Tell them what Warren's been up to and what his bar really is. You say one fucking word and I will kill you. Yeah, right. I will kill you, Liz. Okay, it's over. It's obviously over between you two. Let's just get out of here. You're making a bad mistake, Liz. By the time you realize how bad, it'll be too fucking late. What a psycho. What happened? I've never seen you two fight. Later. Will you guys drive me home? I came here with Warren. Yeah, sure, of course. I'll stay with you too. What about our date? I know, but Warren might try something if she's by herself. You'll be safer if I'm there. I've never seen him act like that before. I mean, he was boiling over. You bet I am. And I can prove it, too. Hey, Liz, what kind of pasta do you want? Uh, spaghetti or penne? Liz? Maybe so, but you have a lot more to lose than I do. 
So unless you want me going around telling the world about it, you Who better- Who are you talking to? See you soon, lover, if you're smart. No, you are not getting back together with Warren after what he did to you? My God! We're not getting back together. Then what was that call about? Nothing, just some loose ends that need to be tied up. Well, just don't agree to go any place with him unless someone else is there. That guy is dangerous. Liz, did you hear that? an interesting story. Unfortunately, there's nothing to back it up. Meaning what? You don't believe me? Meaning what I just said. There's no evidence. You say this unknown person broke in here, stabbed your friend Liz, cut her into pieces with a saw. There's no blood anywhere. Well, of course not. I told you he cut her up on a tarp. She posts something on her Facebook page. I'm gonna read it. Leaving to spend some quality time with the special man in my life. Look at the time it was posted. 12.22 a.m. Wait. After he took the body parts to the car, he came back. I almost ran into him. He must have posted that message himself. Did he help himself to her clothes? Yes. And her car. 
Her car? It's not outside or in the garage. Think about it. You say this unknown man broke in, killed your friend, took off in the car. How did he get here? Well, he must have walked. Or carrying a black tarp and a saw. <laughs> you don't believe a word I've said. You think I'm making it all up. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. It's obvious what you think. I've been here before, you know. I know your friend Liz. It is not inconceivable to me to think that she took off in the middle of the night with a man. I'll be right back. Here, can you sign this, please? What's this for? Uh, this. Wait, aren't you with the police department? No, actually, I'm with WJBX TV. You witnessed the murder, and that's news. I got your name and address from the interview you just did, just in case we need to get in contact with you. In fact, now that I think about it, your story should air in the noon slot today. No, you can't do that. The only reason I'm still alive is because the murderer didn't know I was there. If you tell everyone, he might come back after me. Look, I'm sorry. Obviously, we all hope that you'll be careful, but you did sign a release. I came as soon as I got your message. Are you all right? Uncle Neil, I saw someone kill Liz yesterday, and the police don't believe me. Don't worry, honey. They do now. You didn't tell me your uncle was Judge Hart. He seems to think you're a pretty credible witness. Listen, they're going to take you downtown and uh, fill out a report and look at some mug shots, OK? It'll probably be till noon. You can take your own car if you like. Alexis, are you okay? Someone attacked me in my car. I couldn't breathe. I saw your face on TV and they said you witnessed the murder. I got here as soon as I could. And there was smoke pouring out of your car. I thought you were on fire. No! No, someone attacked me. I could smell the exhaust. Why didn't you just open the door? It wasn't locked. I couldn't open my eyes. You must have seen something. It happened right out in front of the house. I was in my room, asleep. I didn't see or hear anything. But you must have. Your room faces the driveway. 
If someone tried to kill you, why didn't you just turn off the ignition? I tried to move, but I couldn't. You don't believe me. Either of you. After we found you, we turned the car off and took the hose out of the exhaust. It was stuffed with the same paper towel that we have here. There was no evidence that anyone else was there. If it's the same paper towel that we have, then there must be evidence that someone broke in through the kitchen door. Well, go look! You take care of her. I'll look. Why doesn't anyone believe me about anything? I believe you. It's just that at first it looked like you were trying to kill yourself. Of course. That's what someone wants you to think. The same person who killed Liz. How could Aunt Carol not see any of this? She never sleeps during the day. Shh, she might hear you. I don't care. She's resented me ever since the first day I moved in here with her and Uncle Neil. Why? She and my mom are sisters. She was engaged to my father, but then my mom got pregnant with me. So your dad married your mom instead of her? Yeah. A few years later, she married Judge Hart. And then last year, she had a diving accident and broke her spine. Now she hates everyone. So why don't you just get a dorm on campus and move out? You know I can't afford that. There's no evidence that anyone broke in. I looked everywhere. I want to look everywhere. You mind? No. Why should I? No reason. You have any questions before I start? No. Then you know why I'm here. Yeah. I heard about it on TV. Alexis thinks she saw someone kill Liz. What do you think? Nothing. Because I don't know a thing about it. Can I get in through here? Help yourself. in there. What? Did you and Liz have plans for the weekend? No. What'd you two fight about the other night when you hit her? She wanted to quit working for me. I wanted her to stay. When's the last time you saw her? Yesterday, in the parking lot. If you see her around again, call me. I just dug up some incriminating evidence that was obviously planted here to make me look like a murderer. But it won't work. Because there's something in it that proves you killed Liz. I'm not telling you what it is. But if I could find it, the police could too. Especially with a little help from me. I'm at the bar. We close at 11. If you'd like to stay off the death row, you'd better meet me here at midnight. I bring $10,000 cash. Is Alexis Carey home? 
Yes, but she's asleep. You a friend of hers? No, I'm Scott Hill from WGBK-TV. Uh, we aired a story earlier on Alexis, and my news director wanted to follow up. Aren't you her uncle, Judge Hart? 22nd District Court. Uh, but you can't see Alexis now. She's resting. Oh, it's my understanding she spent the last couple hours at police headquarters looking at mug shots. Did she identify anyone? No. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, we're very busy right now, right? Oh, wait, wait. Won't it be a good time for me to come back? I, I couldn't say. Uh, you know, she spent half the night witnessing a murder that the police don't want to believe happened. Then she spent the morning at police headquarters being interrogated like a criminal. Then when she got home, she was almost gassed to death in the car. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, do you think it was an accident or a suicide attempt? It was an accident. There was something stuck in the tailpipe. You'd have to ask my wife. Uh, she knows more about it than I do. As soon as she called me, I came home and Alexis was already in bed. Judge Hart, do you honestly believe your niece witnessed a murder last night? Yes, I do. Okay, then, so what are you gonna do if a suspect is named and the case is transferred to your court? I'd like to hang him. Tub. Hello? Is anyone there? off and then trying to break the door down. Why didn't you answer me when I you called out? You didn't try out? to break the door down? And the lights were already out when I got in here. Seriously, I just got here a second ago. This is getting weird. My aunt and uncle have a gun. I think I'm going to ask them if I can keep it in my bedroom from now on. Alexis, I've been thinking about how the whole car thing happened today and you said your aunt hates you. Why don't you just move in with me? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Look, tomorrow's Sunday. Why don't you just wake up, tell your aunt and uncle thank you, but it's time to move on. I mean, my apartment's in a high rise and there's literally layers upon layers of security. Wouldn't you feel a lot safer there anyways? I sure would. Then it's a deal. <laughs> Got a call from bar made at mug shots. Warren Griffin was found dead behind the bar. So what's that got to do with Alexis? Warren Griffin was abusive boyfriend of Liz Jameson. The girl your niece seems to think is dead. That's not all. There was blood found in the outhouse behind his pub. Well, I'd say that that only confirms what Alexis has told you. Is she home? I want to see if she saw this Warren guy after she left us yesterday. She's back and forth today, taking things to a friend's apartment. Is she moving out? Yeah, but she'll be back later to pick up some boxes in the basement. Hmm. I am 
sorry, Alexis. It's not how I wanted things to work out. It was you? You killed Liz? But why? Money. And to keep everything I've worked for my whole life. You knew Liz, didn't you? She was a prostitute. Or at least became one working as a barmaid for Warren. He dominated her completely. I could tell any time I, I called him to arrange a date at her house. It's no reason to kill her. Mm, of course not. But she had called me Friday to say that she had broken up with Warren for good and that she was using contraception with everyone except me and that she was pregnant. It was you she was threatening on the phone. I, I thought she was talking to Warren. It was me. She wanted $100,000 and that if I didn't pay, she was going to go public. Circuit court judge, befriending pimps and screwing whores. And my career would have been ruined. It was you at my bathroom door last night. It was you who tried to gas me to death. I thought Liz was alone and that you were spending the night with Gabe. That next morning, I, I heard that you saw everything. I couldn't risk you putting two and two together. So I waited for you to come home and set it up to look like a suicide attempt. Bastard. If it hadn't been for Gabe, I would have died. This whole time I was suspecting Aunt Carol. Aunt Carol! Aunt Carol, please call the Save police! Save your breath. I put a tablet in her coffee. She's sound asleep, just like when I was trying to gas you to death. I feel bad doing that to her, but then she's not the same woman I married. Why do you think I was paying Liz for sex? Look, what if I promise to go away and I never say anything to- Death is a silent witness, Alexis. You had a bad fall carrying boxes up the stairs. You bashed your head on the floor and died. I didn't drink his coffee today. I knew he must have drugged me when I started passing out yesterday in the middle of the day. And last night I saw him bearing something in the backyard. I always knew he had some kind of girlfriend. It wasn't hard to guess what happened. Thank you, Aunt Carol. You saved my life. Alexis, you're hurting my arm. Alexis's experience as the sole witness to a murder no one believed happened caused her to doubt everyone she knew and everything she believed in. But in the end, she was saved by the one person she never trusted. 